Yeah, about 24 PSI. This is a uh, yeah. And from what I understand, this unit will produce approximately one kilowatt of power per hour. And that is, of course, when you're getting enough pressure from the head, which is this pipe that's going up the hill. Is that right? Uh, yeah. And we'll we'll. Uh, I guess later today, see okay, another system where they cut the uh, loss in the distance. Oh, really? So, uh, real country living, guys. <coughs> if you lose, this is real country living. Huh? Right. This is real country right. living. Yeah. Now, come around this way. I want to show you this. Put this up. Mm -hmm. right yeah. There you go. Also, I'm following up. In the yeah, and he hasn't put the switch on. So this this is the unit itself here, and you know basically it produces electricity. And I mean it's a really simple system, but it's very consistent. You to bring the water in, produce electricity. It spins what they call a Pelton wheel at the bottom, and that's what between the magnets and the unit produces electricity and it just throws the water off back into the creek. Mm -hmm. so, That's the creek water. Um, it would be um, you could probably use it if you were gonna but then uh, you water. might want to filter it. Filter it yeah. So heat it up if you don't drink it. Yeah. Okay, so that's all. Oh, he only has the one nozzle going. Yeah. <clears throat> That's all. And then, see how it's spinning? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, more right there. Ooh. Going fast, huh, brother? Yeah. Now it's really. Just, you should be able to see here the output. Yeah. The wheel under it, yeah. right? Because the water is making the wheel turn. At the same time, it's producing electricity. I believe that's a DC motor, right? So you have to worry about pressure. It's like it's right at about the bottom. That's a DC motor. The one on It looks like it's right at about one kilowatt. I don't know. That's what it looks like. Your inverter. You've got your charge controller here. And this basically takes from the well, from the hydro rather, from the solar panels. It inverts it into DC, stores it in the battery. Batteries are located here. Um, when you need it in the house, it'll come back from the battery, invert to AC, and then go into the house. You know, it have a, you have a disconnect panel just in case you get over surge or something like that. But let's say that your solar, there's a, it's an overcast day, and for whatever reason you're not getting anything from the hydro, then you have the generator that's also hooked up to the batteries. When the batteries get a certain discharge it'll it's supposed to turn on sometimes you have to manually turn them on but the idea is to have multiple ways of charging your batteries because this is your main power center for electricity it's your storage rather um, you can use directly from the panel for electricity but, you know, when the sun goes down or if there's an overcast day, then you have nothing. So you want to have something back here that you can pull from. And what's a good uh, generator brand name? Well, uh, I've... Uh, I, I came across them. 
uh, Honda makes a very good one. It's a quiet one. Right. Uh, Onan. Uh -huh. yeah. it's, it's, it's another one, and you'll find them a lot in the uh, motorhomes, RVs. Right. Because right. the they're reason quiet. they're quiet, and when you're asleep, you don't want all yeah. that noise, and yeah. it's like, so you want quiet. It's not to do with the people next to you. Yes. <laughs> exactly. No, yeah, when you go camping, they tell you, yeah. But see, this is. This no is generator after. This would be your third source of creating electricity. In other words, you don't want to turn <coughs> this on and have it running all the time. You want to have it running when you need it. Mm -hmm. So if on an overcast day or some day where you're not getting anything from the panels or from the hydroelectric,